Ravens drafted Tyler Linderbaum with the 25th overall pick. And this was a surprising draft pick to me, not because I didn't view Tyler Linderbaum as a first round player, but I had questions about his scheme fit within Baltimore's offense. Iowa ran more outside zone than any team in college football, and the Ravens hardly ever run outside zone. They were last in the league in outside zone percentage last season. They're almost exclusively a gap scheme run game, and it's not that Tyler Linderbaum is incapable of having success in this kind of offense. It's just not the place where his skill set is going to be on full display. Because when you look at his athletic traits, he ran a 7-1-3 in the three cone, which is the third shortest time in combine history for an offensive lineman. And you can see all the rest of his measurements. He's in the 80th and 90th percentile for the speed, agility, and explosiveness testing, but he's undersized and doesn't have great length. So when you run a bunch of outside zone like the Ravens did against Tampa Bay, for example, Tyler Linderbaum's athleticism and technique is gonna pop off the screen. He has a rare ability to lock his hips to opposing linebackers. He has really good hand placement at the second level and he establishes contact and doesn't let go until the whistle. And then a really nice reach block on the one technique here. He gets his helmet across the midline, good placement with the inside hand, but he isn't able to establish contact with the outside hand. Ultimately, it doesn't end up mattering. So when Baltimore calls running concepts that Tyler Linderbaum's comfortable with and that showcase his skill set, he's had a lot of success in his rookie season. But when he's down blocking on power or counter or any of Baltimore's gap scheme runs, he's been fine, but he just isn't anything special one on one at the point of attack. At right around 300 pounds, he's not going to have the play strength to consistently create any displacement on a nose tackle like Dexter Lawrence, so they can just two gap and move him out of the way when the running back approaches. On outside zone runs, Tyler Linderbaum has an athletic advantage over the defensive line because the entire offensive line's moving laterally and Linderbaum quicker, more explosive, and more flexible than pretty much any defensive lineman. So when he's trying to reach a three technique or get down to the second level, he's right in his comfort zone. He's got an extra card in his hand, but one-on-one -on -one against a nose tackle that has a 30 pound advantage over him, the results just aren't going to be that great. But I view this as more of an issue with the design of Baltimore's offense than with Tyler Linderbaum. They knew when they drafted him what kind of player he was, what his strengths and weaknesses were. And so it shouldn't be surprising that he looks way better on the move than he does on down blocks and double teams. And I'm not saying that you need to redesign your entire offense just to fit your center's skill set, but they did draft him in the first round, so I was expecting the Ravens to make a little more of a shift to a zone heavier running game. On Sports Info Solutions, you can split offenses by rushing concept. So this graph shows which teams run the most outside zone and toss plays, which are the two concepts where the offensive line's flowing horizontally. And so the Ravens are at the bottom of the league in terms of how often they get their offensive line on the move, 11.9%. So again, I'm not saying that they need to be number one on here, but the fact that they haven't shifted to a more zone heavy approach at all, I just don't think that's really maximizing the value of a first round pick. But what's amazing about Tyler Linderbaum is that despite not being a great fit for his offense, he's still having an incredible rookie season. He's PFF's second highest graded rookie offensive lineman, number one in run blocking. And then if we look at centers across the NFL, he's seventh in PFF run blocking grade. And for a rookie, he's having a really good season. And then he also ranks third among centers in run block win rate, according to ESPN. So it's important to keep that in perspective. Whatever struggles Tyler Linderbaum has had this season, which we'll discuss, it's not like he's a bust or anything close to that. All things considered, he's having a really good rookie year. As with most rookie offensive linemen, pass protection is the area Tyler Linderbaum has struggled the most. On 351 pass blocking snaps, he's allowed two sacks and 15 pressures, and he has a 50.3 PFF pass blocking grade. But I'm actually not that concerned about his pass blocking moving forward. A significant majority of the pressure that he's given up has been on stunts and twists, which it's obviously not great if you're struggling to pick those up, but it's a lot less concerning when you project to the future than it would be if he was just getting worked one-on-one. -on -one. There are a handful of times he's completely oblivious to a linebacker that's blitzing or a defensive lineman wrapping around his gap. But the most frequent problem I see is committing too much of his momentum and body weight into his first assignment so that when the looper wraps around, he can't slide over quickly enough. You see that right here, he's blocking the linebacker, but he leans his head forward and that creates an opening for Derek Brown through the A gap. And then right here against Tampa Bay, this is just too wide of a gap to give the defense until you know that there's no one coming. Like I said, he's an elite athlete when it comes to side to side movement. So even when he dips his head and commits himself too much in one direction, there are times he's able to slide over pretty well and pick up the stunt, but that's not something you can rely on consistently. So he needs to improve his technique, focus and awareness in these situations. There are some players that for their entire career, they can just never figure out how to pick up stunts and blitzes. But usually that's something players struggle with as rookies and then a little bit in their second year 
and then they pretty much figure it out. So if we're in year three and he's still giving up plays like this, then that's a problem, but I don't expect that to be the case. Outside of these mental errors and pass protection though, there really haven't been that many bad reps. He's undersized, so there are gonna be times that he gives up pressure to power rushers, but the reason that I viewed Tyler Linderbaum as a first round player and not someone like Garrett Bradbury is that Linderbaum has such good technique when he's anchoring against bull rushes. He gets his hands inside consistently and he's always playing with better leverage than his opponent. Right here against New England, he kills the initial bull rush, so 96 starts to go into his counter. He's trying to pull him down from the jersey, but Linderbaum's able to reset his anchor, reestablish his hands, and protect the pocket. And then a great rep here against Dexter Lawrence. He always keeps his feet wide and his toes pointed out, and then he angles his body a little bit towards the pass rusher so that the force he's applying is being redirected into the ground. Great example of Linderbaum's punch and replace technique here against Tampa Bay. Ideally, you'd be able to land that initial punch and just let your grip strength do the rest of the work. But if you get your hands on a defensive lineman, he's gonna shift into trying to get you to disengage. So being able to get your arms swatted down and then replace that punch accurately and quickly, that's a skill that's really gonna help Tyler Linderbaum as a pass blocker. And I really like reps like this against Quinn and Williams, where you can see the disadvantage that he faces as a pass blocker. Williams is kind of throwing him around, but you also see his answer to that disadvantage, which is back balance and recovery ability. There was no question about whether or not Tyler Linderbaum was gonna get overpowered at times in the NFL. The question was, can he offset that with athleticism and technique? And so even though Linderbaum's pass blocking numbers don't look that great, when you watch the film and consider that a lot of the pressures he's given up were just mental mistakes, and you really isolate it to how is he doing in one-on-one -on -one situations, I think you've gotta be encouraged with his development as a pass blocker. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any players or teams that you'd like me to cover.